All right, welcome to section number four. We're going to be calculating the camera angle and uh, showing you guys some really great tricks for matching your perspective. Um, over the break, I just basically cut out our gentleman here uh, in the same way that we cut out our uh, our female character here. So it's um, either way you want to do it, but um, basically just use the same exact methods we talked before and uh, save a little bit of time there. All right, uh, what we're going to be doing now is figuring out some great ways to calculate perspective on these people as well as calculating perspective on the background. Now before we start, uh, I'll just explain kind of like why we're doing this. Uh, basically you have, you know, perspective rules. So let's say you have a horizon here and, um, you know, there's perspective lines that lead out from the horizon. There we go. They lead out in every direction. Okay. Let's say you want to like draw a building. You know, the building is coming down this way. It's coming down the street that way. There's a, a smaller one up there. Maybe there's a, a taller one up there kind of does that. There we go. That's the building and then it's going to cut across the left on there. You've got some windows here and you know they do this as they get as they get smaller. They they all all these lines, all the horizontal lines will always point uh, to the horizon. So that's a really horrible drawing of a building for you. But you can see that they all follow the the same perspective. Now, everything does this. Um, if a person is standing here, you know, they're they're standing here. Well, it's hard to calculate perspective of a person because they're, you know, they don't have straight lines that lead to, towards the horizon. But the top of their head should lead towards the horizon and the bottom of their feet uh, will do as well. If you can imagine them standing on a square, uh, that square needs to also go to the horizon. So that square would have to look something like this. If they were, if they were going to be in this place, um, you know, you've got horizon lines coming out there, the square that would be on the top of their head, on the bottom of their head, would need to look like that. So if the square that they were standing on looked something like this, you know, with lines that clearly don't lead to the horizon, well, I just made them lead to the horizon, but if they don't, um, they're not going to fit into place, especially if you did something like this. If, you know, if that was a square, this person would be standing straight up and down. Um, so it's a, little bit, it's a little bit trickier to calculate perspective with people, uh, but you can do things that will kind of help you along the way. Uh, point being, you know, if there was a person here and they were they were standing here and there was a, a square that they were standing on here, let's say, and the, the perspective lines are supposed to, you know, mean that the square should look like, you know, this. That's that's the square they should be standing on. Okay? If instead the square they're standing on looks like, you know, looks like this, then we can obviously that see that this perspective doesn't belong here, it belongs way over there. So this person cannot belong there. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but like, it's basically like, instead of a person, think of maybe just a bunch of cubes, okay? There's, there's a place that a cube can belong, just like that, it can belong there because these lines go back to the horizon, right? Um, it, this cube, by the way, cannot belong here uh, because it's not going back to horizon. These lines do not go to the horizon. They're, they're going to some other horizon. So this would not be in proper perspective with the rest. Can you see how it looks, it looks off, this cube, based on the rest of the things? If you wanted a cube here, floating in the middle of the air, you would need to have these lines go down towards your horizon. Okay? So that's just like a really simple... Um, a really simple lesson in perspective, but basically the the end result of all this we're not drawing, we're just doing Photoshop. The end result of all this is to say that the leading lines of whatever you're going do need to go to your this is called a vanishing point and you, this is called a horizon. Those things are very important because if you don't have those correct, it's going to look like people are just floating or the really weird scales and things like that are going on. So we're just going to delete that real quick. Um, Let's pull up our background, and I'm going to show you guys some great ways where you can actually calculate um, your vanishing point and perspective and things like that. So we're going to create a new layer. I'm just going to use my marquee tool, and um, now what we're going to do is f like make a really small selection. And um, you know what? Before we do that, I'm going to grab my crop tool, and I'm going to click on these edges here, and I'm just going to drag out just in case we need some extra room here. Because um, you never you never know where your vanishing point is going to be, especially when it comes to people and objects and things like that. Okay, it's a little more obvious when it comes to backgrounds. So let's make that. I'm going to make a just a, a very thin line, and I'm going to hit Shift Delete, fill that with a color, and we'll just fill that with red. 
Okay, so there, that's that's my little like line there. Let's hit Command T. We'll rotate it around a little bit, and then I'm gonna just shrink it up. So we're gonna make it very small. Okay, we're gonna be using the, a few of these. So this is not part of the image. This is just part of you know getting getting our perspective right. Okay. So let's go ahead and just pretend that we didn't actually add that in there just yet. Okay, I'm going to show you guys the, the way in which you actually calculate this. So we've got these red lines here. Okay, remember all lines lead towards a horizon. Okay, if they are in fact parallel with the horizon. So I'm going to bring this up to here. I'm going to hit Command T. Let's just drag our control point right up to that roof line. And we're going to rotate this right around there. Something right about there and we're just going to follow that line there. Okay, I'm going to hit Command J so we'll have another one of these and we can hit Command T again and we can scale it or rotate it. Let's just hit Command T. I'm going to rotate this around there. If it's getting too big and you can't really see just try to hit hit Enter which will rescale everything you're doing and you can hit Command T and your bounding box should be a little bit smaller. Or you can bring it wherever you want to and then just use these like rotation things up here so you don't have to like zoom in and out, okay? A couple different easy ways to do it. All right, and now we have this line down here. So the line from the top of the roof and the line down here, they intersect right about here, which is about where we think our horizon should be, which makes sense, right? Let's make sure that our horizon is the in the same place for this image, because if it's not, we need to move this image. Does that make sense? Because that is the horizon for, let's see, that is the horizon for the background image. If we want to composite that together, we need to make sure that that's the horizon. So I'm going to hit Command uh, R, which brings up our rulers, and this is going to allow us to draw a guide. I'm going to bring that guide right there, bonk, and then we'll bring one from the left. There we go. Now what this is going to allow me to do, I can go ahead and move these red lines freely and um, I know that I've got at least the vanishing point of my background, okay? So let's get the vanishing point of, um, of this other image that we then added in. Let's start off with this one. I'm going to hit Command T, and we don't have as much information to go by here, and the reason is because it's, we don't have as much buildings and things like that, okay? Let's just zoom in and see that I just want to be sure that this follows that line of the building, which it does. It doesn't do that very. Let's just grab a curve adjustment layer. I'm going to bring this a bit brighter. This will all make sense in some time why I'm why I'm actually doing all this. Okay. I, I hope that it does anyway. Let's just shrink this down because it's a little bit too thick. These lines don't need to be thick at all. They just need to. You just need to be able to see them. I made the curves adjustment layer so I could see what I'm doing a little bit better. All right, let's bring that control point right about here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just rotate that around. Okay, so now we have a line that looks like, yeah, pretty well matches the top of that roof line, right? Uh, it doesn't. It does matter how how correct you get these. I mean, if you're off by a, a decent degree, um, what that's going to mean is basically you're going to be calculating your wrong wrong perspective. Okay, let's hit Command J, and then we'll just try to do this on a different way. I don't trust the ground so much because it's kind of like, it's just kind of, um, it's not really that well defined. So we're going to use instead like the bottom of those windows. Okay, let's zoom in there. Bottom of the window there. Hit Command T. Let's bring our little control point to the bottom of the window, and then. Just move our perspective just a little bit until it until it like lines up with all the bottom of the windows. And the more you do this, um, the more accurate of an idea you're going to have for your perspective. Okay, so let's just try hitting Command J again because you can be a little off on these things, right? And um, you know, if you, the more off you are with this sort of stuff, it'll just kind of like compound on itself. There we go. We're going to move this right to about there. And I'm going to change the angle of this as well. So if these, if you do this correctly, all three of these should line up exactly at the same place. If they don't, uh, what I usually do is take the average of where they are. 
because it's hard to tell. I mean, you, we're just lining up things. But you can see they're, they all intersect in pretty much the same place, right? It's like, yeah, okay, it's pretty much right about there. So this point is the horizon of this image, okay? So if we make this image invisible, we can see the horizon line of our base image is up here. Okay, the horizon line of this image is actually down here. So what we need to do, I'm going to shift or just command click those as well as command click the layer itself and the adjustment layer that's on it and now we're going to move those up just a little bit. Now, it's most important where the actual horizon is. Okay, that's the most important part that the horizon matches up. If it doesn't match up vertically, that just means it's rotated in a 360 degree uh, array around. So it's like, instead of looking straight on, it's basically the same as like, it, you're looking to the left a little bit. But the up and down, that is very, very important. So moving that up, um, let's just show the before and after. You won't be able to tell a huge difference, but it should look more, it should mo look more like, okay, the the street actually goes back in that direction instead of like curving down or something weird like that. All right, so relatively cool here already. We're already, you know, figuring out exactly where it needs to be. Um, so that's, that's really helpful as well. So that's for the background and oftentimes you don't have to really create that for the background and you don't have to do this at all unless you're actually compositing things, okay? So let's just group those together and I'll bring this up to our bikers group. We can close out our background group there. Okay, so now we need to figure out our, our woman. We need to figure out the perspective on her. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use these same guides, but we're going to calculate something different. Obviously, we don't have the, we don't have building here, right? But if these wheels are the same size, they should also follow the same rules of perspective. They'll, they will go back into, you know, one is farther away from the camera than the other one. So they will go back into infinity, and um, all we have to do is match the top of the tire. Here we go. And then we'll just rotate that around and make sure it matches the top of our other tire. Okay, now you don't have to get this incredibly precise. The better you can get it, um, the better. <laughs> That's just kind of funny. The better, the better. You want to get this as close as you can. But if it's not perfect, it's not worth spending like an hour and a half of your time. Just get it pretty dang close. All right, let's just click there. It's slightly intersecting the bottom of the tire there. Let's just rotate this one back around. And there we go. Slightly intersecting the bottom of the tire again. Okay, now I can't see where these intersect because these, these lines that I made are, are not long enough. So let's just push them off to the left there. Um, you can move this up and like left and right doesn't matter because it's just a it maintains the same angle, right? So let's push this guy off the left there too. And again, you don't have to do this really ever. You definitely don't have to do this um, with images that you're not compositing. But if you are compositing images together, um, I would recommend I would recommend doing the best you can to calculate perspective and match perspective. Okay. So what this tells me is that based on those lines that I've created, okay, our vanishing point is up here. So what that says is right now she's too high in the image. Okay, let's just bring this group right down here. This will become more and more apparent. Let me just bring this a little bit higher. Sorry, let me lock that trans lock that back up. Okay, so if she was right there, let's just say she was right there and you're like, I don't know where she should be. Should she be right there? There's no way on earth that anyone would believe that she was actually right there. And it's not even the fact that she's way too big for the image. What it is, is the fact that the perspective is completely different. The perspective from the, of the background image is completely different from her. She's, her wheels are vanishing to a certain point, but that vanishing point is much, much higher than the, than the horizon of the image. And we already said that all lines lead towards the horizon. So just by the fact that she's that high, on this image means that it will never work. Same thing if we put her down low, it's never going to work. But if you want to calculate exactly where she should go, all you have to do, do is zoom in, find the point where those two meet, which is the vanishing point, okay? And then 
she's exactly where she should be. That is, that is where our subject sh could, should be. She can move left and the right pretty easy in this image because all that means is that she's actually like, you know, further to the left or further right. But she can't move up and down. She can't move up and down because that violates the rules of perspective. Okay? Um, she can move, she can change in scale if she wants to change in scale. And how you change scale is you hit Command T and then you have to scale someone about the vanishing point. So we have to bring our point there about the vanishing point and then hold down the Alt, hold on Shift as well as Alt or Option and then this person will scale in and out of the vanishing point. See how they're getting closer and closer to the vanishing point there, closer and closer to the horizon based on her vanishing point as well as the horizon of the image. So if you want her back there, she can be back there. If you want her here, she can be there. But she can't be, she can't be here. Okay? That, that's just not going to happen ever. So let's put her right about there. That's where I actually want her to be. Let's hit enter. And now we know where we placed her because the vanishing lines we created from her match up with the vanishing lines of the background. Alright. I know that's a little complex, but hopefully not too bad. Let's do the same thing with the man. We actually have to do this. So we have to do this. Let's make her invisible. And let's, I just duplicated that group uh, for the man. He's obviously going off to the other direction. So what we're going to do is allow his, his lines to go off to the right. All right. Top of the tire there. And it's hard because I can't see the top of the other tire, right? Let's just bring that over here. I can't see the top of this other tire, so I kind of have to guess, but I'm okay guessing just a little bit. And the more of these lines that you can you can make comfortably, like you feel like, yeah, that's actually where it should go, uh, the better every time. All right, so that is just intersecting with the bottom of that tire. And let's have it just intersect with the top, bottom of that tire. So if there was like a straight line across here that you knew was uh, parallel to the ground, that would be that would be a great way to do this as well. Okay, so we have our perspective on our man now, and we're seeing that again. He is much too. He's much too high, right? He's he's up there and um, he got turned into I want him back blue he got turned back into red um, he's much too high as well so he needs to come down to right about there and now he's going to actually look like he's in proper perspective for our scene so again he can't be up here he can't be down there he's got to be he's got to be where we put him to where his his vanishing point matches up with the vanishing point of the image, the horizon. Okay, so kind of cool. Now what we can do is kind of figure out what we want to put them. Uh, the man's going to go behind the woman. Oh, he should be red, actually. The whole thing should be red. So let's um, hit Command, open bracket, to put him behind the woman. Okay. And he's going to be off to the left here as well. Now he can get smaller, remember, which I do want to do because I want to make him farther away from the camera. So I'm going to hit Command T. And we're going to bring this right about there to our horizon and then hold down the shift and the command key sorry shift and option and then get smaller and then he's going to rotate off to the left there all right there we go so as long as his vanishing points still continue to intersect on the horizon he will look like he's actually in the scene because look at that let's just make the bike I mean, it's the vanishing point of my entire image is right here, right? Of the background, we already we already decided that. And as far as our height goes, we're we're definitely good. So instead of looking like he's going to head this direction, he just looks like he's headed that direction. But it does look like he's actually, you know, in the scene, which is pretty important. And it's um, it's cool because now you guys know how to do it. It's it's not as hard as you might think it would be actually. Just calculate your perspective if you can. Alright, so we'll figure out about where we want both our man and our woman and um, just double check on making sure that those points intersect where the horizon is. And they do.
Cool. So now we don't really have any question about um, whether they actually fit into the scene as far as perspective is concerned. Now there are a lot of other questions and a lot of other reasons why they might not fit. They obviously, it's not done, the image, they don't look like they're there yet. Um, let me hit Command H and that's just going to get rid of those guides real quick. But perspective wise, they look like they look like they're in place. Now he might be a little too large or a little too small. We can kind of fix those things later. I think I'm going to make her a little bit a little bit larger. So I'm going to hit Command T on her. Let's make sure to turn this back on. And there we go. About that point, I just want to make her a little bit larger. Move her back to the left. Cool. All right. Very nice. So we have basically everyone placed in perspective now. Let's hit Command H again. And I'm going to go ahead and crop this back in. So C for the crop tool. And we're just going to crop that in there. Very nice. We can cut a little bit off the top. So it's a bit more of a normal looking crop. And uh, I'm going to hit Enter. Again, remember, do not click Delete Crop picked, Delete Crops picked crops, pixels. Can't talk over here, but you know what I'm saying. All right, so that's basically calculating the angle and uh, putting them in the scene. Now that is something that most people don't do because they've either never uh, learned how to do it or thought about it or whatever it is, but it's extremely important. You can see how, you know, if this, if she was slightly up, I mean, if she was like even that high up, she would not look like she's in the scene. So it's, it's not a guessing game here. This is something that is pretty pretty important whenever you're matching perspective and things like that. So um, yeah, good luck with it. If you are photographing someone they don't have any leading lights, lines, try have them stand on something that's like uh, a square or you know like a, a piece of poster board that you cut into a square and then you can calculate perspective from that as well. So you know have fun with it and make up your own rules but just remember perspective is a rule, it's not a guideline and um, you should follow it if you want your images to actually look real. So. That is, um, that's our next on perspective. Uh, the next section we're going to be basically making these people integrate into the scene. We're going to be working a lot with shadows and highlights and all kinds of really cool stuff. So uh, we'll see you in the next section.